Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Stephen Williams, founder and president of thecreditrepairshop.com. And I must apologize that I have not been able to make videos. It's been probably a little more than three weeks, maybe even four weeks. And a lot of things had happened over that period of time uh, on the personal side. Um, I think before I had left on the uh, my last video, I was going to go on a trip down to Florida. Went on the trip. It was a very good trip, but I was kind of sick on that trip. And then, I, you know, it just kept going on to other family members. My grandson got sick, and my daughter got sick, My and then my wife got sick, and then my wife actually got very sick because she also has a problem with her oxygen where she was hospitalized where she was in the hospital for five days. You know, it was very, uh, uh, just a, a scary time for us. And uh, But everything is, is good to go and she's back home and things are going really well and she's getting better every day. And you could probably even kind of hear it even in my voice where, you know, it's like it's just this lingering. They said it was a viral infection and just lingering like you'll be sick for two weeks and then you'll feel like you got better and then you'll kind of have that cough that just lingers a lot longer but uh everything is going through and then after that was all taken care of and i was going to be making my videos last week um something happened in my neighborhood and i live in a very good neighborhood but just this just goes to prove that things can happen anywhere uh, my neighbor, just one house down from, from my house, one house that's in between and in the next house, her their uh, daughter was actually shot and killed by her ex-boyfriend. And if you look in the news in Kenosha, uh, you can see she was only 16 years old and her boyfriend was only 15 years old. So he actually got a gun, went into their house, shot and killed her, and then... When her mom came out, when she heard everything, he shot her mom, but her mom, uh, she made it. But, you know, this family is living with her, uh, with their daughter being gone now, being shot. You know, she's there one day and then gone the next day. And then in my neighborhood, we got the news. People, you know, I, when I drive up to my house or come out, reporters are in our face you know they're asking us questions uh you know um at the day of the event i was not even able to get into my house on that thursday because i mean we're right down they thought that he was still in the house barricaded and uh but he wasn't he had escaped out uh but i you know we wasn't able to get into our home for hours and then um but they did catch him the next day and so it's a very sad story so now I want to get into, I got uh, the release of debt because that's what I always like to talk about. And uh, it looks like we've got Wells Fargo, Wachovia Bank. Uh, these are small accounts, but it looks like over $100,000 from one and then $200,000 from another and then $299,000 from another one and $399,000 from another group, from that group of uh, banks. Bank, it was Wachovia, Wells Fargo, Fifth Third, and Bank of America. That's a group of credit cards. Look like small accounts. accounts, uh, And also, uh, let's see here. Yeah, they, these were small credit card accounts. Then we got some more Wells Fargo by itself, $1.7 million. We got some uh, mixed credit cards. These are... Uh, department store card 1.8 million dollars here is a small uh, payday lender two hundred forty two thousand dollars and then another payday lender eight hundred and fifty eight thousand dollars and then we got here um, uh, the uh, sh shopping network the uh, shopping network that you see on TV uh, eight hundred twenty three thousand more shopping network uh, de uh, defaults, two $2 million. Uh, Wells Fargo again, $1.79 million. And uh, payday lending, $800,000, 858
thousand dollars. That was a, actually that was a repeat of this one here, eight hundred fifty-eight thousand um, dollars. One thing that I already see that's wrong with all of these debts is that the latest uh, origination date was twenty eleven. The rest were all before that. So right away you see that there's a problem. Statute of limitations. Let me tell you the game that they play to get you to what what's called reaffirm reauthorize whatever they want to call it it's just a trick to get you to start the, the the process over from the statute of limitations so they'll give you a call they'll say you know you had this debt you know you had a debt you may not remember the exact origination date uh, and it's probably off of your credit reports because it's past the statute of limitations even for being on your credit reports unless it was a judgment uh, and it would, if it's a judgment, it wouldn't be in this batch anyway. So, uh, when if you get a call from them, watch for the recording. They'll even let you know right away when you talk to them that this is debt is past at your limitations. They'll throw some type of verbiage on there, just saying that you have some moral. You're willing to talk to them about this debt because of some moral obligation to pay the debt. That's a whole bunch of BS. You don't have to worry about doing that. What you want to do is if you get a letter from them, you want to write immediately that this debt is past statute of limitations and you want to cease and desist all collection actions or you will be filing a complaint with the state attorney's general office for harassment. That'll uh, get rid of all of these uh, people or these debt collectors that are just set buying debt and then they resell it and then they resell it to somebody else to try to see if they want to try to go after it. That'll put an end to that. Uh, so if you get any types of debts coming to you because there's millions of dollars that's being released every month, you need to not only pay attention to the, the letter, which is an actual a letter uh, allowing you to dispute. It looks like a bill, but it's a letter allowing you to dispute. They'll usually have an origination date of the loan on there. Uh, they're required to have that, but if they don't, what you want to do is you want to look at your records and see when you had that, uh, remember, with that card or that account and then if it's past seven years, you need to, uh, and it's, every state has different statute of limitations. So what you should do is you need to look at contract law for your state statute of limitations. And then once you know what the statute of limitations is for, for contracts in your state, then you could move forward and write the letter to them for uh, saying, stating that, it is past statute of limitations. You want to cease and desist all collection actions. And if they don't stop, that you will report them to your state attorney general, general's office. Uh, if you call them on the phone, you can say the same thing to them, but don't get into any back and forth about paying the debt. You you could just note they're recording the call, so you could just notify them with that and then say that's all you would like to say. And then you can hang up the phone. Uh, or if you want to be nice, you can say, you know, uh, I don't have anything else to say. Can you end this call? Um, so that's how you're going to deal with that. Now, let's go into if it's not past statute of limitations, then your next step is to still dispute it with the new owner, which is going to be one of the debt collection companies. And you want them to have to prove everything about the debt, even all of the paperwork and contracts, signatures, the charges, everything that's pertaining to that debt from the original creditor. They need to provide that to you. And then they also need to provide to you the uh, proof of why they should pay you the debt. Now, one big problem that they're going to run into is if they buy these debts in big packages, usually what they're going to get is like a big stack like this. Let's just say this account here, this account has 769 accounts with it. What it's usually going to be is going to be just lines with the account number and name going in, down a piece of paper. So when you get the document in the mail, uh, the first thing that they're going to usually try to do uh, before giving you all of the paperwork is they're going to just show you that and say that they purchased the debt. They probably are going to try to hide how much they purchased the debt for. Just to give you an example, for this account here, for $2 million for this account, their, own, their starting price before even negotiating was $3,000. So we're looking at, if you go with the accounts, we got... $3,067 divided by 700 
and 69 so they're actually paying three dollars and 98 cents per account with the potential possibility of collecting over two million dollars let's just say that they collect a million dollars say that they collect uh a hundred thousand dollars say that they collect fifty thousand dollars say that they collect ten thousand dollars they're still making a ton of money and that's what they're doing is they're gambling on people not knowing their rights and uh, just trying to disregard it or falling into the trap to reauthorize the debt. This is what these companies are pros at doing. No, they don't get away with it with everybody, but there's a lot of people, probably 90% of the people don't know their rights and they end up paying them something or, you know, uh, or reauthorizing the debt by paying a small down payment just to try to not have any issues on their credit. So you have to be very careful about that. So um, once you request all of the information, the original contracts, your signatures, your charges, if it was a credit card, whatever it was, you want all of that information. And then you want to get the proof from them that you have, that they have a legal right to come after you for the money. And you want them to prove that uh, a lot of the times, especially when it's going to be a debt like this one, they're not going to be able to get that information because these are debts that's probably been passed over and passed over from different debt collection companies. So if they're not able to get that information, uh, then you need to write that letter and say you want them to cease and desist from any collection actions and that if they do, don't, you're going to uh, consider harassment and you're going to notify your state attorneys general. If everything is within the law, they prove everything, it's not past statute of limitations, uh, there seems to be, uh, you know, where it could actually hurt your credit if they decide to put it on your credit, you know, where all of the boxes are checked. And, and, and I'm not one of these uh, 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 financial people that'll tell you, no, you know, just keep running, never pay them. There could come to a potential time that you have to pay a collection that is a hundred percent validated <coughs> excuse me that's a hundred percent validated and you rather uh, be ahead of that and not have it go on your credit reports and and try to do some type of potential uh, settlement you you can see here uh, what I told you what they're buying these debts for it was what three dollars four four dollars for the for the debt so you have a lot of wiggle room on uh, settling that account for a, a good amount of money because one of the things that I've learned dealing with debt collectors like the first thing that they're going to try to do when they buy uh, debts like this they're going to try to make their money back first so for this one here if they spent three thousand they're going to push very hard to make their money back and then they want to start you know the gravy on top they'll they'll start pushing a lot harder or waiting a lot longer to get money collected once they've made their money back because then everything that comes in is like gravy like icing on the cake so i hope you got some great information from this and i will be feeling a lot better by next week uh, my, you can see my voice is already starting to go out so i'm not gonna keep the video going but if you need help you can always visit our website thecreditrepairshop.com or you can watch other videos that I've put together and you can learn how you can, uh, you know, repair your credit and get yourself out of debt. Thank you.